go. All right. Uh, hi, everybody. So today I'm going to talk about TypeScript. Uh, the reason why I'm going to talk about it is because it's kind of one of the new up and coming languages. It's used by big names like the Angular team, uh, a company called Palantir that does cybersecurity, as well as Bithound, which is, I think, a company that does something that helps you manage dependencies. They're a big name. Um, so a little bit about me. Uh, I'm a fourth year computer science student at the University of Waterloo. That's in Canada. Uh, I'm currently a front-end uh, intern at Veo, a fleet logistics company based in San Diego. Uh, I do AngularJS and TypeScript development on a day-to-day -day basis. I also code in Python, Ruby on Rails, as well as C++, and that is me with a banana phone, because <laughs> why not? So what exactly is TypeScript? I mean, there's all this hype about it. So it's a statically typed uh, syntactic sugar over JavaScript. Um, it essentially allows you to do type checking that looks a lot like C++ or C Sharp or Java um, for JavaScript. Um, it also is a superset of JavaScript, meaning that valid JavaScript will also be valid TypeScript. So for example, your console logs, your console durs, those will all work perfectly fine. Um, it's also ES5 and ES6 compliant, so that means the JavaScript that it outputs will follow this ECMAScript um, uh, standard. It's also object-oriented, as I mentioned earlier, so that allows you to break up your code into modules and classes and interfaces, and it, it allows it to be very um, easy to manage over time, especially as your project scales. Uh, it looks a lot like C Sharp and Java, so for all those old-school programmers out there, definitely look into it. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's open source, and surprisingly, it's a Microsoft product. I know, right? Shocking. So this is typically kind of the workflow you would use for TypeScript applications. Um, you would pretty much be running your TypeScript file, passing your TypeScript file into a TypeScript compiler, which will then output to JS. Um, you can use different tool chains and build processes like Gulp and Grunt to build your entire project, minify, do all that fun stuff. Uh, so one of the main differences I'm, that I noticed when I transitioned to TypeScript was how classes and prototypes were structured. So I'm just going to talk about that and, you know, show like the difference between it. So this is something that I worked on. So I created a class called Person. Um, again, if you've done C++ or C# -sharp before or Java, this looks very familiar. You're essentially defining your uh, attributes up there and then your methods within that block of code. Um, as well as you can, as you notice the methods actually have a type uh, constraint. So greeting, for example, has to take in a string. If it takes in a number, the compiler's gonna freak out and you're gonna be in tears. Um, so I've created something similar and put it into uh, just regular JavaScript. And this is just, I know a lot of you guys have seen this before. This is just the prototype uh, aspect to kind of contrast how it would look and feel compared to TypeScript. Um, so different applications of TypeScript, I mean, hopefully I sold you on it. You guys are probably wondering, what can I use with this? So here are some of the big names that you can use. Obviously, Angular is using, uh, Angular 2 will be built in TypeScript. You can also actually build Angular 1, version 1 projects using TypeScript. Um, Ionic, for those of you guys who like things like PhoneGap or Cordova, you can build your entire uh, mobile app, native mobile app using TypeScript. Uh, Electron is actually something that a lot of people use, but you know, you don't hear about it. Uh, the Slack app for Mac OS and Windows was actually built using Electron. It's a JavaScript to uh, native PC, native desktop platform. jQuery obviously uses, you can obviously use uh, TypeScript with your jQuery code, and you can build mean applications using Node.js and TypeScript. So just some tools that you can use with TypeScript. Uh, Sublime has a great uh, plugin for TypeScript. Adam has one, but the auto the autocomplete is kind of janky, so I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, Visual Studio has a great uh, type, has obviously has great TypeScript support, um, and WebStorm has a really good WebStorm is pretty good TypeScript support too. Um, okay, well, this is longer than I thought. So just getting started, you can install through npm, and you want to use something called TSD that helps you get all your uh, TypeScript library code. And there's a really good tutorial down here. If you guys want, I'll send you the set. Of, I'll send you a copy of these slides. Questions, Heather. So you see classes in ES6 now. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, yeah. So other than that example and um, strong types, 
Mm -hmm. um, so you can do things like extending your parent class. Um, so let's say you have like a base class of a car and then you want to build Honda Civic as a separate class. You can do, you have the extend keyword. I'm not sure if ES6 has that. I'm sure it does if you can do classes. Um, I think the main thing is really type checking as well as syntactic sugar and really enforcing um, structure and readability. I think that's one of the major things. That's for a little plug. <laughs> oh, you mean like the ampersand? You mean like after? Um, I think I've seen it before. Uh, to my experience, though, I've never really used it. But I think you can do it. I mean, Angular two can do it, so I don't see why you can't do it on a regular. On a regular. I had a question in the back. I don't think so because, again, this is just a layer of syntactic sugar. Um, it, at the end of the day, if you look at your outputted JavaScript file, it's out, outputted compiled TypeScript file. It's still JavaScript. It's just um, it's just pretty much syntactic sugar. So you still use JavaScript at the end. Sorry for you. I'm sad too. Uh, anybody else? Yeah. Um, so it does static analysis at compile time. So it would actually read your code and it will look at it just like how regular compilers would typically check um, invoke it, like invoking this uh, function and checking, oh, this is type match the protocol. So it would be So I think, I don't think TypeScript would give you the opportunity as well because the function itself already specifies the type it takes in. So you can't. It's like passing in, I don't know, an int into, a, into an input that only takes charge in a C program. It's the actual compiler would prevent that from happening. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. If that's the case, then I think at runtime you'll have problems. But this is more so to protect the programmer from passing that type. Anybody else? Okay, all right. Thanks, guys.